everyone, so for today we'll be working on a solution for problem set 1 which is cash. So in this problem set, what we want to know is that for any given amount of change owed, what is the least number of coins that we can give? So in this case, the coins that we would have would be quarters which are 25 cents each, dimes which are 10 cents each, nickels which are 5 cents each, and pennies which are 1 cent each. So how do we usually calculate the number of coins per denomination to give? So in this example, we use 41 cents as the amount of change owed. So this is something that many of us do almost every other day, but for this problem set, we will be breaking down the logic and steps as to how to calculate change. So to calculate the number of quarters that we can give, we will take 41 cents minus 25 cents, and that means that we will give one quarter. So since the balance of 16 cents is less than 25 cents, we cannot issue any more quarters. So we will now calculate how many times to give, and that would be one. And we repeat this until we give all the coins needed to make up the amount of change owed, and the total number of coins that we would give is 4. So before we go any further, I just want to take this time to thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you will like and subscribe to show your support for this video. Thank you! So moving on, before we dive in, let's look at the distribution code that we are already given, and by doing that, we'll be able to know what we already have and what we need to work on. So firstly, the distribution starts with our usual header, so that would be include CS50 and include standard IO. And then we can see that there are five functions here that we need to write, so that would be get cents, calculate quarters, calculate dimes, calculate nickels, and calculate pennies. So moving on, you can see that we can start by asking the customer how many cents is owed. So this is done by stating that there will be an integer called cents, and we will get cents, which is the function that we need to write to prompt the user to key in how much is owed. And then the user will key in an integer, which is the number of cents owed. So in this case, let's have an example. So let's say 41 cents. And then we will need to calculate the number of quarters to give. And we will declare an integer called quarters. And the function calculate quarters will then determine how many quarters we will give. So after obtaining the number of quarters to give the customer, how much change is left? So 41 cents minus 1, which is the number of quarters that we can issue, times 25 cents equals to 16 cents. So that will be the balance change that we will need to work with. So moving on, we want to calculate the number of dimes to give. So again, we declare an integer called dimes and we will use the function calculate dimes to determine how many dimes to give. And once we issue the dimes, how much change is left? So we will find that out by taking 16 cents minus 1, which is the number of dimes given in this case, times 10 cents equals to 6 cents left. So since no more dimes can be issued, we will move on. Next, we will do the same for nickels. We will declare an integer called nickels and use the function calculate nickels to determine how many nickels to give the customer. After that, we will calculate the balance change left. So that would be 6 minus 1 times 5 cents and we will have 1 cent left. And with that, we will do the same with pennies and we will only issue 1 penny. And after that, we will add up the total number of coins and print the final answer. So with the example that we have been working on, it would be a total of 4 coins to give to the customer. So in summary, there will be 5 functions that we need to code, so that would be get cents, calculate quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So let's work on the first function that we need to do, which is to get cents. So for this function, we will prompt the user for a number of cents owed using getInt, and the number should not be negative. This is the portion of the distribution code that we will key in our function. So how do we do this? So firstly, we will start by saying that there will be an integer called cents that we will be working on and we will get the user to key that in. So do note that the integer key in must be positive and this means that we actually need to include a validation rule where the system will check the input key in. If the user keys in a negative input, the user will actually reject it and keep prompting the user for another input. So this is where the do while loop comes in. So that is, we will keep doing the function Sense equals to get in amount of change due while, which means as long as the sense key in by the user is less than zero. Okay, so this means we'll just keep prompting the user to keep keying in the amount of change due if the user keeps keying in the sense that is less than zero. Okay, so let's see how this looks like in C. So now we'll be working on the function for get sense. So first we will start by saying that there will be an integer called sense, and then we'll move on to our do while loop. So the system will keep prompting the user for the amount of change due as long as the sense key in is less than zero, right? And with that, 
if it runs successfully, we actually want to return the number of cents that the user has keyed in. And that will be that for this portion. Next, we'll be working on the function calculate quarters, where we will just need to calculate how many quarters to give to the customer. So this is the section of the distribution code that we will need to work on. So as we jump in, let's use the example of the change being owed as 68 cents. So let's break this down step by step because we need to put this into code. So based on 68 cents owed, how would we calculate the change? So firstly, since 68 is greater than 25, that means we can issue a quarter and we will add 1 to the total number of quarters that can be issued. The balance change owed would be 68 minus 25 equals to 43, right? And since 43 is still greater than 25, we can issue another quarter. So we can add another count to the total number of quarters that we are giving to the customer. And the balance change will now be 43 minus 25 equals to 18. So since this is less than 25, this means we'll stop issuing quarters and move on to dimes. So let's focus on the quarters first. So we will start by declaring that we have an integer called quarters. And since we have not issued anything yet, we will start with zero. So cents refer to the outstanding change that we owe the customer. And you can see that as long as cents is more than or equals to 25, we can issue one quarter, which we can represent as quarter plus plus. So each time after we issue a quarter, we need to update the value of cents. After the first quarter is issued, cents become 43. And after the next one is issued, cents becomes 18. So essentially, your code will say, as long as the value of cents is more than or equals to 25, which is the value of a quarter, we will add a quarter and update the value of cents. Okay, so let's put this in C. So now we will be writing the function for calculate quarters. So like I mentioned earlier on, there will be an integer called quarters. And as long as the cents, which is the amount of change owed, is greater than or equals to 25, we will issue quarters. So this is us updating the amount of change left as we issue quarters incrementally, which is represented by quarters plus plus. And after that, what we will actually return will be the number of quarters that we'll be giving out. And that will be how you write the function for calculate quarters. Next, we move on to the function for calculate times, where we will calculate how many times the customer should be given. And again, this is the distribution code that we will need to work on. So continuing from the previous example, we have 18 cents left that we need to issue coins. So since 18 is greater than 10 cents, which is the value of a dime, we can issue a dime, and then we will update the number of dimes issued as 1, and the balance change is 8. So now, since 8 is less than 10, we cannot issue any more dimes. So similar to what we did earlier on, we will start by declaring that there will be an integer called dimes, and its starting value is 0 because we have not issued any dimes for now. Cents refers to the outstanding change that the customer has. So as long as cents is greater than or equal to 10, we can issue a dime. And after we issue the dime, we will need to update the value of cents. And after issuing one dime, the value of cents become 8. And then we cannot issue any more dimes. So let's put this in C. We'll be writing the function on how to calculate dimes. So again, integer, we call dime starting with 0. And as long as the amount of cents left is greater than or equal to 10, we will issue dimes and update the cents value and increase the number of times incrementally and we will return the, fact, the quantity of times that we will be issuing and that would be the function for times. Next, we will be looking at how to calculate nickels and again for this function, what we want to do is to calculate how many nickels the customer should be given and this is the portion of the distribution code that we will be working on. So calculating from the previous example, now the change owed is 8 and since 8 is greater than 5, we can actually issue a nickel. And likewise, we will add 1 to the total count of nickels issued and update the amount of change left to be 3. So again, we start by saying that there will be an integer called nickel starting with 0. And as long as cents is greater than or equals to 5, we can issue a nickel. And after we issue the nickel, we need to update the value of cents. So with that, the value of cents left is 3. So let's put this into C. For the function for calculate nickels, again, integer called nickels, starting with 0. And as long as your balance change O is greater than or equal to 5, you would update the value of cents and increase the number of nickels every time we issue out one. And we will return the value of nickels. And yep, that will be the function for calculate nickels. So moving on to pennies, again, we want to calculate how many pennies we can issue. And this will be the part of the distribution code for us to work on. So since we have 3 cents left to work with and 3 is greater than 1 cent, 
This means that we can go step by step and issue 3 pennies to finish up the number of coins that we need to give out. So again, we declare an integer called pennies, starting with 0, since we have not issued any out. And as long as cents is greater than 1, which is the value of the penny, we will update the remaining cents amount and also increase the count of pennies. So let's put this in C. For the function for calculate pennies, what we're going to do, declare an integer called pennies, starting with 0. And as long as your amount of cents is more than or greater than 1, we will update the value of cents and we will keep issuing pennies incrementally. And again, return pennies. Okay, so now let's compile this and give this a try. Make cash. So it compiled successfully. So let's run cash. So let's see the amount of change due is 24 cents. And yep, that would be correct. Let's run cash again. Let's say if my amount of change owed is 25, I should only be getting one quarter back. And that is correct. One more time, if there's 99 cents, I should be getting 9 coins back. And yep, there you go. So this is a solution for cash. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please do like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.